So welcome back. Um, you know, we just want to make some announcements. This will be a shorter meeting than usual, uh, and uh, especially to uh, introduce some new faces. And I want to start off with our new director. We have a new director of construction management, uh, director uh, Dr. Suat Gunhan, uh, whose director he uh, is the result of an international search. Uh, as we sought to move from a coordinator position to a full director position, one of the members of our executive board, our leadership team of the college, and uh, he's right here, if you'll come up. Uh, he received a Bachelor of Architecture and a Master of Science in Architecture degrees uh, in Turkey uh, before moving on to graduate degrees and a PhD in Civil Engineering with a concentration in Construction Engineering and Management from IIT, that's the Illinois Institute of Technology, where he specialized in international construction. Uh, he's also worked extensively with Turner Construction, one of the world's major construction management, one of the most innovative construction management firms in the world, uh, in their special projects group in the Chicago office. Um, where he was responsible for all phases of work beginning with pre-construction. And that's really important to us because our goal with construction management here is to graduate disti the distinction we should have are graduates that know how to work with architecture and interior designers. That's really special because those are the teams that have to work together that deliver the most progressive, most interesting uh, buildings in the world. And that's where those, that, that teamwork is absolutely essential. And he knows that part of the spectrum. So we're really excited about that. And I just want to uh, ask if you have a few words to say. Uh, sure, thank you for the uh, great introduction. I want to let you know that I'm very excited and delighted to be here uh, in, in, in Kent State. Uh, we had a great turnout last night. I met with the uh, uh, students of the program. I really enjoyed the conversation. Um, today, uh, we have a, we, we, how many construction program students we have here in the audience today? But we, we had a great turnout yesterday. They were all here. Uh, they actually, one of the uh, mem uh, construction management student organization members, they are in uh, Las Vegas right now in NAHP competition. They are not able to attend here today, so they just wanted me uh, to make some uh, announcements on their behalf. Um, they will have a, a spring semester kickoff meeting on January 27th. They want that uh, uh, construction program students attend that meeting, kickoff meeting. We will uh, hold our career fair meeting on February 7th. And um, one of the important events this semester on the week of uh, March 1st and starting with March 1st, March 1st and 7th, we have an, uh, the National Association of Women in Construction events taking place uh, in the campus. So we have a already March 4th event scheduled. Please visit the uh, KentStateConstructionManagement.com website and get further information about our events. Um, they are handling uh, many uh, organization events and planning going on with the AGC, NAHB, ABC, NECA, MCAA. Uh, again, you can uh, be, uh, you can know more by visiting their website, as well as volunteering events and uh, competition events. Uh, NAHB is taking place right now. There will be University of Cincinnati New Builders competition uh, next month, and ABC competition in Nashville uh, will take place in March. Um, again, uh, I'm very excited to be here, be part of this team. I think this uh, place, this building offers everything we need for collaboration. And I'm looking forward to working with you, with all of you, and collaborate uh, within the college. Our, uh, my vision for the uh, program will be that Kent State construction management graduates will be known for their collaborative skills, in an, in an, in an integrated uh, project process. That's my vision for the uh, uh, program for my students. And um, as a mission, we will, I will make sure that we achieve the uh, excellence in graduate and our undergrad programs. Our graduate program officially uh, will be ours by next semester, Master of Science in Construction Management. And, uh, 
I will make sure that we strengthen our relationships with our advisory board. Uh, I will make sure again that they are, they are our stakeholders in the process. And um, um, we'll continue to, uh, again, build strong undergraduate and graduate programs. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gunan. And I forgot to mention, you know, the, the back end of his resume before he came here, he was at the University of Texas, San Antonio, where he was associate dean of, uh, of research there in the uh, construction management uh, program. So we also have to welcome uh, Dr. Luis Santos, ABD, uh, who's joining us. I saw you, if you would just uh, raise your hand, come on up. We're not gonna put you on the spot in front of the mic. A new assistant professor focused on creating bridges between architectural practice and research on building performance and simulation, generative design, and indoor environmental quality. He holds a Master of Architecture from the University of Lisbon and a PhD, ABD, from UC Berkeley, where he developed new modeling methods for goal-oriented design procedures based on thermal and daylight simulations. He is a, a designer. He is going to be teaching in the design sequence as well as the technology sequence. We welcome you. Great to have you here and on board. And last but not least, we welcome Sarah Milley, our new public relations and marketing coordinator. Would you just come forward so everyone can see you? She specializes in marketing, public relations, and graphic design. She has a BA. Uh, in integrated marketing and communications from John Carroll University and it is in the process of her completing her thesis research for an MFA in the uh, School of Visual Communication Design at Kent State. So we're really excited to have her. Uh, we're gonna turn the lights back on. Uh, social media has been great with all of your assistance and our absence, uh, but we are going to uh, move that even further and update our web page and get out there with marketing and communication in a way that we haven't been able to do uh, in the last significant period. So look for that and help us and we'll say a few more things about that in a couple minutes. So you know besides the great news in the fall that uh, design intelligence ranked uh, both the architecture and ID programs uh, significantly high for uh, programs that firms want to hire from uh, we just had a, a big win this winter, Harbin uh, placed first. Did I say it right this time? First prize, I keep getting corrected on that. I don't know the difference between first prize and placed first. But first prize uh, in the Harbin ice and snow competition. So congratulations. Uh, anybody from that team here besides Professor Liu? Okay, but they did great. We had architecture and CM students involved. So that was really, really great. If you haven't seen the images, they're terrific. And uh, beating Cambridge University, guys. Number one engineering school in the world, uh, and number one in a lot of ways in the world. Um, we beat them. So, um, ACSA quad leader, Cooper Moore, Midwest quad leader, where are you? All right, let's give him a big hand. This is a national leadership position. Cooper is our vice president of the AIAS and now is a quad leader. Is that a two-year appointment? One-year appointment? So do big things. You got to jump right in on these one-year terms, right? Uh, got to be ready to hit the ground running. So that's really great. And this year is the 20th year of our anniversary of, of the CUDC. So look some, for some events uh, coming up there. You know, as you know, uh, the mission here is to prepare you to lead in the rapidly changing profession and world that you're in. Uh, that's super important to us, and uh, it's toward increasing national attention and recognition for the remarkable education uh, that is happening here, and it's working. Uh, we're getting a lot of attention. We're excited about that. And to that end, we really work at integrating the art and science of our disciplines uh, as informed and inspired practices. So keep speculating, keep trying things, and testing things. You know, we really look forward to you in these years of your education to take risks, to try things uh, as, as designers, as people uh, taking on new technologies, whether it's in construction or design, uh, to really figure out how you can be at the leading edge. And being at the leading edge, you know, you take a little bit of risk and it doesn't always work out. That's not failure, that's learning. So. Uh, be at that cutting edge. That's where we want you to be. And that's why we invest in this curriculum. Um, you know that we've increased significantly 
uh, our travel opportunities. Uh, we're very, very proud of that. We're very thankful to the Elliots and others who uh, give so that we can help support those who really can't afford uh, to be out on those trips. We have a, a, an index studio going to Brazil. We actually have two studios going to Brazil this semester. I'll let uh, Professor Bernal talk about those in a minute. Um, we have an ID group going to uh, Columbus, Indiana. We have an LA Modernism course going on again, and many, many, many more things domestically that are happening. Uh, it's really great in the curriculum. But we also have a rich co-curricular program that we're committed to, and I want to ask John Yoder uh, if he would come forward. I think I saw him. Uh, and tell us about the wonderful lectures and exhibitions that we have for this year. Sure. Uh, thanks, Mark. Again, we have a great uh, diverse lineup, something for everyone. Uh, please try to attend as many of these lectures, symposia, exhibition openings as you can. It's a really important augmentation to your kind of curriculum uh, that you're in. Um, our first lecture kicks off uh, February 10, uh, which is Clark Fenhouse from California College of the Arts. He's also currently installing an exhibition here. We'll have an exhibition opening on February 10. February 26, we have Hernan Diaz Alonso, uh, who is the director uh, of SciArc. He'll also be doing a book signing. He has a new uh, kind of monograph out on his, his work. It's pretty exciting. In March, we have a whole lineup of uh, five important events uh, that you should be aware of. Francine Huben of Meccanu will be visiting on uh, March 2. She's this year's prospectus lecturer. Um, if you're familiar with Meccanu, uh, if you're not, you should be. They're prolific practice based in the Netherlands, and they've built uh, buildings all over the world. It's going to be a really exciting event. She's the cre creative director of uh, Meccanu. And then we have Catherine Sievet Nordensen on March 4. Uh, she's coming from the City College of New York, and she's lecturing on Roberto Burley Marx and forest politics. So she's going to be talking about uh, the fires in the Amazon and the kind of impact not only on landscape architecture uh, but global ecology. So that's going to be a great, great event. Um, and then uh, a lecture actually coming from Brazil is this year's uh, visiting professor Sol Camacho uh, from the Lina Bobardi um, Institute and she'll be lecturing on practicing research. That's on March 9. March 12 we have Amy Campos. Uh, she's head of interior design at California College of the Arts. Um, she'll be lecturing here. Most of the lectures uh, are located here, uh, except for Rachel Armstrong's keynote address on uh, March 17, which is part of the Biodesign Symposium, uh, which is this year's uh, version of the annual uh, ESDRI, Environmental Science and Design Research Institute's uh, kind of um, ongoing effort to bring uh, design and the sciences together. So she'll be lecturing actually in the Kiva Auditorium on March 17. Um, and then we have Philip Yuan uh, coming from Shanghai, who is the head of Arca Union Architects, again a prolific practice. He's this year's Steidel lecturer. Um, I first saw his work at the Chicago Biennial, I think it was now about three years ago. Some of the best work, something I would call almost non-derivative work in the Chicago Biennial. So that's going to be a real treat. He's going to be here on April 7. And then uh, this year's Shudlowski Emerging Faculty Fellow, Zara Safaverdi, uh, many of you have interacted with her already. She's going to be lecturing on April 13 and installing her kind of year-end project here in our Armstrong Gallery. And then April 16 and 17, we have a symposium uh, that's jointly held at the Akron Art Museum and here in our scene lecture hall titled Photographic Architecture. Uh, that's kind of tying in with the graduate design studio I'm currently teaching and Beatrice Colomina will be the keynote here in Kent on the 17th and the previous day the keynote at the Akron Art Museum will be Martino Stierley uh, who is the head of, uh, the director of architecture and design at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Um, so that's, that's pretty much, pretty and, much and, it. And the curator and mastermind of that is Professor Yoder who will be running that uh, as the result of, of winning a grant to hold that symposium. So please attend all of these events. It's a really great, diverse lineup. Again, I want to thank Mark and the rest of our administration, Yvonne Bernal, the other directors and coordinators for uh, generously supporting this kind of programming. And then again, endowing these really global lectures and other events. Um, it, you're privy to these things that 
many students at many other architecture schools and design schools are not. So please join us as many times as you can. Thanks. Yeah, a, a really huge hand for, for John and the work he's done at, at, with that committee in, in making our lecture and exhibition series um, nationally significant. I mean, it, it stands up to any in the country. And uh, please don't miss those. You will be missing out if you do. Um, we also have, and, and by the way, if you're a medium or a large person, we have t-shirts left from last semester. So I think the uh, student organizations will be selling some of those. No smalls. Um, but there are some of those left. Um, so we also have workshops coming up. Uh, there's two scheduled, while well, one is semi-scheduled. We have a LIDAR workshop on February 8th. He'll say more about that, I believe, and also an AR, VR uh, that's going to be up at VOCON in, uh, in Cleveland. Uh, CM competitions abound. Uh, we, we have a group, a team in, in Las Vegas right now. We should hear early this afternoon if they did, if they won uh, or if they placed. We haven't heard, have we? Okay, so too early to know. And uh, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Professor Willoughby, Associate Dean Willoughby, who's also director, interim director of ID, if he would come forward. And Ron Daniel, are you here? because we have two special, come on up, we have a couple special events coming up in early summer. The second annual Thresholds Workshop in New York with uh, Lebanese American University, uh, with uh, being run by, by Professor Daniel again, and if you want to announce any details about that, or uh, that would be terrific. Uh, I don't have too much to say. Um, gonna be uh, co-hosting it with Lebanese American University, and uh, the organizers are me, uh, Ron Daniel, I teach in interior design, and Bridget Tipton, also faculty in interior design. And we will have a poster out, hopefully in the next week or two, with program dates. We're looking at end of May into early June, um, and we'll have an application process. So it'll be about 10 days in New York City, uh, working with students from Beirut, and looking at lobbies. Uh, which sit in this kind of amazing place between the energy and chaos of the city street and then the controlled and designed interior. So a really rich kind of uh, type of space in which really amazing things go on. So we're going to start that for interior design students and then we'll see if we'll open it up to architecture students as well. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Exciting new opportunity. And I believe the, the ambition is to produce some kind of a book out of this after two years doing it. And we also, for the first time, are going to be running for interior design again, uh, a summer workshop in Paris at the Paris American Academy. Uh, Professor Willoughby, uh, Professors Willoughby and uh, Larmer are going to be uh, running that. If you would come forward and maybe give us some information. It's not going to go down, but let me just get it down just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's more to my height. Uh, yes, so um, the Paris American Academy, uh, we are partnering with them on a visit to Paris. Uh, it'll be actually through the um, May 13th till the 26th, so about 12 days in Paris. Uh, we're working on uh, specifically looking at the the urban palace in Paris and how that has been transformed over time into museum spaces, scientific museums, spaces of fashion. And at the end of the day, it ends up to be about 14 to 15 amazing spaces that we will uh, be going to and seeing. We'll go to the Palace of Versailles. We'll be going maybe to G. Giverny and the Villa Savoy. So we have quite a few things packed into that time. Uh, Peter Carmen, who runs the PAA, is also uh, looking at how we might be able to include an activity like a charrette around this idea of how spaces get adaptively reused and changed in urban contexts. So we're very ick. It, 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 we're very excited about this. Professor Larmer and I are working on the final list of places we will. Uh, uh, we, we will visit, be a very packed itinerary in a short period of time. Fantastic. Very exciting opportunity, and uh, we hope that this will be the first of something that we institutionalize uh, in, with a relationship, a very strong relationship that we're building with the PAA, Paris American Academy. 
Um, I think it's a good time to hear from our other directors. Let's have uh, maybe Brett come up and uh, any announcements for ARC studies. There we go. Um, just uh, very quickly, two exciting things for architectural studies students. Um, uh, first of all, uh, a third thing, we have architectural studies students in Florence right now, and we had them in Florence last fall. I think it's the first time we've had uh, uh, architectural studies students in Florence in both semesters in a very long time. So uh, if you're architectural studies, uh, do think about going to Florence. Um, secondly, the architectural studies studio is uh, focused in uh, Euclid, Ohio this, uh, this semester. Uh, which uh, is uh, showing them how the various uh, disciplines are connected, architecture, landscape architecture, urban design, uh, graphic design, how they are embedded within communities and how, uh, how the de uh, demographics, history, and, uh, and social factors that are at work in a place like Euclid uh, influence the design of, uh, of public spaces. And uh, so they're even getting a, a sense for how uh, infrastructure like uh, the problem that uh, Northeast Ohio has with, uh, with combined sewers uh, impacts the, uh, the design of public spaces and the built environment. Uh, we just took them up to Cleveland uh, or to Euclid uh, this past weekend. They saw literally what it looks like when that sewer comes out into Lake Erie. Um, a very uh, direct and physical learning uh, experience. Uh, so um, the other thing I wanted to point out was the uh, another ARCS course, the uh, Methods and Theories of Representation. We're very excited this semester. It's being taught by Professor Kat Marshall, who is the coordinator for the Landscape Architecture Program. They're over in Terrace Hall looking at representation theories in the landscape. And as I understand it, they are producing very large landscape uh, drawings of uh, representation. So do take a visit over to uh, Terrace Hall to see what they're up to over there. Thank you. I'm going to ask Professor Bernal to come up. Now, if you were a part of the fall reviews, uh, you saw pretty spectacular work, and it was your work, and it, it was extraordinary, and we got those comments back time and time again from our external reviewers, which we've brought in from all over the country. And, uh, you know, I think we have to thank Professor Bernal for that, for uh, the final reviews, how they're structured, but the kind of work that's emerging here is, is very, very exciting, and it's getting lots of national attention. So, Professor Bernal? Welcome back, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. So, first of all, I want to thank you all for being back and actually taking the time to attend today. One thing that I want to emphasize is the co-curricular and extracurricular activities. As you guys start planning your semester, it's very important that you are aware of everything that is going on. Lecture series, workshop series, final reviews, studio pinups, midterm. Please be curious, walk around the building, ask your classmates what they're doing, start having conversations about what's going on in the school, and how you can start being better informed about what we're doing in the architecture program and in the college at large. The lineup of reviewers, the lineup of lecture series is amazing. I don't know if you understand that, but it's really like top, top notch. So make sure that you attend all of these lectures. It's not required, but highly recommended. Another thing that I want to emphasize is many of you guys, third year and grad students in architecture are exposed to option studios. And we have an amazing lineup this year. Uh, the grad level option studios, we have a studio being run by Professor Postinci. We have another studio being run by Professor Yoder. And we have a visiting professor coming from Brazil, Sol Camacho. She's doing a 15 week studio looking into bathhouses in Brazil and looking at the architecture of Sao Paulo. That's an incredible opportunity for them, and also they'll get to travel to Brazil. We have an index studio. The Cleveland studios are traveling with uh, Professor Kilian Riano to Brazil as well, this time to Curitiba. And all the third year studios have some allocation funding to travel. Some of them will be going to Boston, Miami, Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, and so on. So just be aware of your entire education that is not solely concentrated in your courses and your studio, but everything that is happening around you. And it's important for you to keep your eyes out out and try to actually absorb as much as you can. Okay? Welcome back.
Yeah, it's really so exciting. I just envisioned as he was talking a, a world map, you know, the kind with the tacks and the strings and all the places we are because we, we really have expanded our presence in a lot of places and, and we're building our network. And that network will serve you uh, as you move out, as you graduate, because you'll be uh, well connected and you'll have confidence to move into other places because of those experiences. Uh, you know, we have career fairs coming up. We have two coming up. Construction management on the 7th of February, architecture and ID on the 6th of February. That's two in a row. Uh, and in preparation for, can you say something about the preparation for those two? Yes. So next week, uh, Tuesday and Thursday. On Tuesday, we're inviting some faculty and professionals from around the area to look, to give you a conversation on portfolio, formatting, what's a good layout, what space, margins, font, types of graphic. And we're just going to have an overall conversation with some samples for you guys to have as reference. And then two days after, on Thursday, we're going to have a portfolio review, which each of you will get to sign up with three people that I will share a list. And then you would sit with these people and they will give you very specific one-on-one -on -one comments about your portfolio layouts and how to improve them. As you prepare for the career fair that will, fair that will take a week after on February 6th. Yeah, so get involved in those. Even if you already have a job or don't think you need a job, go and, and find out. Uh, we want to build your, the strength of your portfolios and that doesn't happen the first shot. You need to do them over and over and over again and keep honing them and making them better. Uh, they're what gets you in a door and gets you into a, a seat in offices. Um, we also, um, you know, have changed something here in our curriculum. Three or four years ago, we taught Revit in uh, architecture program in second year. Revit is a really, really important program in the professional practice. It's how you deliver buildings. It's a really, really terrible design tool. It's an even worse educational tool. Okay, but it's an essential tool. So we've changed something. We don't teach it in second year in architecture. Uh, we do teach it in fourth year in IDS. We do teach it in one of our core courses so that you have it and you're able to go out into the profession and use it, but be in control of it. See, the thing with Revit is it's one of those tools, like many tools, that if you're not an absolute master of it, it masters you and it dictates what you can do. And it really makes architecture pretty restrained and, and, and it's based on libraries that you just select and put in. And it's not really design, it's more like specifying or adding a kit of parts together. That doesn't make sense. But we've bumped into a problem. And the problem is many of you have internships, you want internships, and in offices they want you to use Revit. So we have a solution that if you're in second year, first year, third year, and you don't know Revit yet, and you want to get employment, and you know that you need to know Revit, we're offering workshops. I think they're going to be in the evening, right? Yep. Evening workshops. So that, you know, at no cost, no credits, you need to learn Revit. You want to learn it just to learn it so that you can have that kind of uh, preparation to get into an office. You can do that. We want you to take advantage of those. So stay tuned. The dates aren't yet set, but they will be set in the next week, and there will be posters about that. So look forward to that. February 14th, deadline for the Traveling Fellowship proposals, okay? Very exciting. Uh, win $4,000 to travel somewhere in the world and do a project and come back here and present it to this community in the scene. Uh, and leave a leave behind in, in the library. Uh, we are so excited. This year we will have four students and one faculty member presenting. Let me just tell you who they are. Aidan Crossy is going to present Superilla. He went to Barcelona and Madrid, uh, where he uh, did some research. Brandy Green, I saw her out here, uh, reforming prison design in the US, who, who traveled to Norway. She's going to be reporting back to us on prison design and what we can do better. Uh, Donna Grigonis uh, for temporary use in Berlin, case study of Tempelhof and its evolution. Uh, she went to Berlin, and we'll be hearing from her. And Macy Nelson, who did Xeriscapes, uh, traveling to Nevada, uh, looking at uh, uh, dry, uh, hot climates and landscapes there. Uh, look forward to your colleagues' presentations. Please come to those co uh, presentations. There'll be lunchtime uh, in the scene to be uh, scheduled. And Professor Nick Safely, New Tales for Details, uh, the important tectonic expressions of SCARPA and how it's relevant to contemporary post-digital speculation who traveled to Italy and Norway. No? Just Italy, right? Yeah. Okay. Very important. February 14th. 
put in a proposal. You will have, they're blind proposals, they'll be reviewed by a committee, and uh, it's great practice to do. Um, our student orgs uh, leaders, who are going to talk in a minute, may mention uh, the Beaux-Arts Ball. I hope they do. If they don't, I'll jump in afterwards. Um, now, how many of you are thinking about Florence? You thinking about it? Somebody must be. David Thal, Professor Thal, are you here? Would you say a couple words about Florence? Uh, such a key program, uh, signature program. Uh, we were, I think, the second to ever have a program in Italy. We've been leaders there and still are. So. Let's hear about our program. I think we're the first. We're the first. Let's okay. do it. 1972, I think we were the first program. So I see a lot of faces uh, that were in Florence, uh, so welcome back. We had about 35 students uh, from our college in Florence uh, last fall. We have about 60-some students there right now, and we have a meeting uh, that will uh, happen, an informational meeting. So please let students know uh, Friday, February 7th. Uh, and that will be whether you're interested in going in fall 20 or spring 21, and then eventually we'll have some core inf info sessions depending on which semester you're going. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody uh, on February 7th. So if you have friends that are interested in Florence and they're not here today, please let them know. We have a nice reminder on the digital screen as well. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so our student organizations, uh, I'd ask the leaders if you'd come forward. I don't think we, Zoe is in Nevada uh, for construction management. Uh, I don't think there's anybody here there. But Brandy uh, Green is here to speak for the Interior Design Student Collaborative. Is, Laura, are you also here? Yes, okay, good. So why don't you um, bring us up to date? And then I think Amber is here from AIAS. Uh, Walter Hunt is here from NOMAS, I think. I think I saw him. No? Walter, you're here. Yep, come on up. Who else do we have here? You know who you are. Come on up. But that may be all that are attending. Okay. But if I missed you, come on up. Go ahead. In that same order. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name is Laura Holland, and this is Brandy Green. We are senior interior design students um, who head up the Interior Design Student Collaborative. Um, what we do is we work with local chapters of ASID and IIDA um, to bring them here and also to um, let students know about events that are happening locally in the area for you guys to attend. This is um, a great club to join, um, not only for mentorship and friendship, but also um, for networking opportunities with those organizations um, that honestly, the earlier you start, the more you get out of it, um, especially those looking for internships, even second year and third year, um, this would be a great um, opportunity to explore um, to kind of solidify those internships with professionals that we work with in the field. So with that, Brandy can talk about events. Yes, we have a few uh, coming up in January. IIDA sponsored them. One is a career shift program where you can get your portfolio looked at by professionals, have speed practice interviews. Um, the second one is, oh my gosh, um, okay, I completely forget it, but I'll remember, just see me, I'm always somewhere around here, and my desk is on the third floor, but I definitely encourage you to take advantage of anything that is offered, which I know all about the programs, except for today, I'm forgetting that one, but um, just see me, and you won't regret getting involved. Hi everyone, I'm Amber. I'm the president of the American Institute of Architecture students. So first, before I talk about us, I'm gonna talk about the Beaux Arts Ball. For those of you who don't know what the Beaux Arts Ball, it's basically a formal within the college. We're bringing it back this year. If anyone wants to co help come up with theme ideas or planning for it, there's a meeting this Friday right here at 11 with our task force that's in charge of that. So if you're interested in helping with that, please come to that. And then as far as what we have going on this semester is we have events that are focusing on internships, how to get them and what to do once you get them. We also have a lot of social events to get to know other people in architecture. If you're not in architecture, it doesn't really matter. You can still come to our events anyway. Um, our first meeting is February 3rd at 7 p.m. in the Scene Lecture Hall. And if you, you want to look at our calendar, we're still getting some dates set up, but our website and social media will have that put out there when we have it. So. Oh, 
<laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Walter Hunt. I'm a public relations for Nomus. Uh, I would like to talk about Nomus and everything that it's done for me, Control, and our other board members. Uh, Nomus uh, provides empowerment for students and prepares them for the professional world. Uh, we have many events. Uh, we have an art gallery uh, in collaboration with the city of Kent, so that'd be nice. Uh, we do a lot of community service. We kind of like work hard, play hard. <laughs> There's an annual conference. Uh, during this conference, I've, I've received so many employment opportunities, and I'll leave Control to talk about the rest of the events. How you doing? I'm Control Lodge. I'm the president of NOMAS. Um, this semester, we're focusing, we're focusing hugely on um, engagement in the community. So um, with that said, we're going to do a gallery this semester, which we encourage anyone to get involved in as well. Um, that's going to be focused on community engagement, and we're trying to do that downtown. As well as we're going to have a couple mixers and a few other things like that. Uh, and then on top of that, we want to encourage people to get more involved. So we have a couple board positions that are available, and that's because a couple people went off to Florence. So got to fill those in. So if you guys are interested, please email me or Walter, or Blessing What's your last name? Odeo. Odeo. Yeah, we'll send out a uh, mass email to everybody. <laughs> all right, thank you. OK, great. Yeah, give all those organization leaders a hand, OK? They do a lot. They're leaders. Hey, no, I'm not. <laughs> They're really important organizations. And you know, last night, I, uh, I, I met with uh, some people. And There's one more. APX. APX. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're Hi, uh, my name is Lucas. I'm here to fill in for our president, uh, Becca Curry. Um, I'm talking about uh, APX. We are a professional fraternity for architecture and design students. Um, we pr pride ourselves on our community involvement. We do things such as uh, Habitat for Humanity, Relay for Life, uh, the Food Drive, and then actually last December we did a uh, Christmas caroling at the nursing home. Um, for our professional uh, committee, we put together events such as uh, business card and portfolio workshops, and then each semester we go on uh, a firm crawl. Last semester we went to the, uh, Chicago. So if you're really interested in getting involved, APX is a great way to do that because you will gain so much knowledge about the profession and uh, meet some great people along the way. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, it's great. Um, we have great organizations. So how's that archive now? Is the archive better? No response. Nobody in this group used it. Maybe we're still struggling. But we had better response, and Professor Lusak put together an amazing interface. It's easy to upload, it's easy for us to use, and we need you to engage it and use it. So your professors are gonna be encouraging that or requiring that. We need you to upload to the archive because we're trying to build visual culture, and this is gonna help us with our social media and with our webpage, because we're gonna be putting a lot more student work on the webpage, and don't you want your work to show up there? So, um, so help us out. Um, student employment, I don't know if you realize this, but uh, four years ago it was less than 10, it's now 96. 96 student employees here in the college. Um, you may be aware if you're a student employee that we raised the rates, uh, the hourly rate uh, uh, this last uh, January 1st. Um, but also we've changed the maximum number of hours we will hire you for. It was 10 across the board, so to make sure that you don't uh, overcommit and you realize that your academics are number one. Um, but we realize that one size doesn't fit all. So it's now based on a sliding scale relative to how many credits you have. So if you only have eight credits that you're taking, you could do 20 hours a week. Uh, and if you're carrying a full load, you still are limited to 10 hours a week. But please be aware, we have all kinds of opportunities. Uh, there will be emails coming out occasionally for those positions. But just so you know, we have the publications office. We have, uh, in, in the administration area, we have lots of people helping in the office. We have the printing lab. We have fab lab monitors. And then we have graduate assistants, or GAs. We have teaching assistants, which are teach TAs. We have RAs, which are research assistants. We have DAs, which are digital assistants. We have CAs, which are course assistants. And we have FAs, which are faculty assistants. Stay tuned for those. Those are great opportunities for you to get a little bit of money, but also be working in your discipline and in many cases very closely with faculty.
That's all I have to say, other than have a great semester. Uh, having this meeting in week two cuts down on the numbers, uh, but have a great semester. I know it's gonna line up well. We have exciting courses and studios and a great faculty, and I hope you enjoy it. Come to see us anytime. The directors, me, the associate dean, uh, let us know when you see a problem. Let us know when something's broken. Uh, we can't change things we don't know about, okay? Thanks a lot. Have a great semester.